اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم last time we studied the quran class and we had only one question from the quran class last time so what should you do if your father or mother or sibling or wife or son or daughter commits a crime and you know that they have committed this crime if must stand as a witness against them in the court okay. so we must stand witness against them even if it is our dear person okay, okay. today we will study from masnadi imam ahmad hadith number 3 4 Okay, Mr. Muhammad, read this. It was narrated that Simak said, I had Iyad al-Ash'ari -Ash say, I was present at Al-Yarmuk and we had five commanders over us. Abu Ubaidah bin Al-Jarra, Yazid bin Abi Sufyan, Ibn Hasana, Khalid bin Al-Walid and Iyad. And this Iyad was not the one who narrated report to Simak. Umar Umar said, if fighting occurs, then your commander is Abu Ubaidah. So we wrote to him saying, we are facing death and we asked him for re reinforcement. He wrote to us saying, I have received your letter saying for reinforcement and I can tell you about who has the greatest support, support and the most ready troops. Allah may be glorified and ex exalted, ask him for support for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was caused to prevail on the day of battle with fewer than, than your numbers. When this, when this letter of mine reaches you, fight them without referring back to, to me. So we fought them and we defeated them, pursuing and killing them for four parasangs. And we acquired wealth, booty. They discussed the issue and Iyad suggested to us that we should give 10 for every head. And Abu Ubaidah said, we will compete with me. Who will compete with me in a horse race? A young man said, I will, if you don't get angry. Then he beat him. And I saw the two braids of Abu Ubaidah flying as he raced, as he raced behind him on an Arabian horse. Uh, this and this is related to a battle which was fought in that era. Men message of this hadith is this that numbers does not matter in the world if we just fight with true faith on Allah Almighty and if we are a good person inshallah the result will be good our job is to don't look at the number just fight for the sake of Allah and today we see Muslims are afraid of Israel almost every country is afraid of Israel they are not fighting against them but according to this hadith, no matter even if all world support is right, still they need to fight against them. They should not be afraid of their weapons or their numbers. But its opposite is happening these days. Okay. Next student, uh, Aisha, read this. It was narrated that Ali Ali bin Zaid said, I came to Medina and entered upon Salim bin Abdullah and I was wearing a silk. Salim said to me, what are you doing with, with this garment? I heard my father narrate from Umar bin Al-Khattab that the messenger of Allah sallam, said silk is only worn by one who has no share in the hereafter. So men are strictly prohibited from wearing silk. We better write this question because we see some Muslim men 
wear silk clothes. Can a man wear silk clothes? Can a man wear silk clothes? According to Hadith 345 of Masnad Imam Ahmad, no, he cannot. I will repeat the answer. According to the Hadith. Three, four, five of Masnad Imam Ahmad. No, he cannot. Miss Ummi Ahmad, repeat the question and the answer. Can a man wear silk clothes? According to Hadith 345 of Masnad Imam Ahmad, no, he cannot. Did you find anyone who uh, you can teach Hadith? Or you did not try to find anyone? No, I'm teaching my, my kids and we have a class of Tajweed. Before the Ma'alim comes, I read every question to them and give them like this when you ask me. Okay, good. Then inshallah your knowledge will also increase. You know, read this and this. It was narrated from Amr bin Shu'aib from his father that his grandfather said a man killed his own son deliberately and, uh, and the case was referred to, um, to Umar bin Al-Khattab who ruled that the murderer should pay 100 camel as dear. 33-year-old she, cam she camels, 34-year-old she camels, and 45-year-old she camels. He said, and the killer does not inherit anything. Were it not that I had the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, no father is to be killed in retaliation of his son. I will have executed you. So this hadith says three things. What if the father kill his son? for something then what is the fine for that this is the first thing but since we don't have any islamic government in the world at the moment so this thing we can't see anywhere this law and then the second thing is killer does not inherit anything so for example if anyone kill another person for inheritance then that person will not get anything in inheritance for example a son kills his father to get inheritance then the according to islamic law that son will not get any share from inheritance and also that son will be killed and if the father kills his son then the father will not get in any inheritance from the son third thing is that the father will not be killed in retaliation for his son three things are mentioned here but these are related to islamic law which we don't have any islamic government so no need to write any question here next miss Aisha. It was narrated that Amar bin Shweb said um, Umar Razilatanaha said, Were it not that I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi say the killer gets nothing from the estate of the one of one he murdered, I would have included you. Among the he killed and gave the camel to him. Camels to him. So, main thing is again if anyone kills anyone 
for the greed of inheritance then that person will not get any share from the inheritance this, this is also related to islamic law common example we see is this that sometimes children kill their parents for inheritance we see cases in the in that case according to islamic law the children that child will not get any share in inheritance it was narrated from this one it was narrated that malik bin aud bin al hadathan said al abbas and ali came to umar with a dispute al abbas said judge between me and this one and the people say judge between them judge between them he said I shall not judge between them. They know that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, we are not to be inherited from what we leave behind is So when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died, when a common person dies, his inheritance is divided among his children, his relatives. When Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died, so some relatives like Ali Rajalatarano, Abbas Rajalatarano, they also started demanding their share among the inheritance. In that case, this hadith and um, he told this hadith that prophets are never inherited. This, this means anything which Prophet left was considered the property of the Islamic government and nothing was given to his relatives. Miss Aisha, next. It was narrated from Ibn al Musayyab. Musayyab. That Omar Rajalatana said one of the last verses to be revealed was the verse on Riba al when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said that he had not explained it, so avoid Riba and any dubious matter. So, we see many insurances, many investment schemes which have Islamic names and they take fatwa from Big Mufti. But in fact, they are riba, they are interest money, they are interest profit. So you should not invest anything in a, in any investment scheme unless you are sure that it is 100% Islamic. If you are, have any doubt, then you must not invest in it. <clears throat> Can you invest in an investment investment scheme or insurance scheme about which you are doubtful D O U B T doubtful whether whether it is halal halal or haram 
और राम इंटरेस्ट मनी कैन यू इन्वेस्ट इन एन इन्वेस्टमेंट स्कीम और इंश्योरेंस स्कीम अबाउट विच यू आर डाउटफुल वेदर इट इज हलाल और हराम इंटरेस्ट मनी सो अकॉर्डिंग टू हंदीस थ्री फाइव जीरो of masnad imam mohammed we should not invest in dbs method or you can also write dbs investment schemes or dbs insurance scheme i will repeat according to hadith 350 of muslim ne imam ahmad we should not invest in doubtful schemes miss umia ahmad repeat can you invest in an investment scheme or insurance scheme about which you are doubtful whether it is halal or haram interest money according to hadith 350 of masnadi imam ahmad we should not invest in any dubious matter or dubious investment scheme or dubious investment insurance let's suppose as as ustad can i ask you a question yes what about this mortgage here if i take a mortgage and some sheikh say if maybe i'm i will be staying in it it's okay to take but some sheikh they say because there is interest is not allowed so that's where i'm thinking about is it okay or no it depends on what all its details so if i don't know about the details of this some are halal some are haram, are haram. so i can't say anything about it okay it depends on what are their terms and conditions okay okay thank you okay if you want i can tell you in detail can you share the details like the mortgage is uh, um 280000 pound and then you pay monthly like 1000 1000 1000 Okay. every month until you finish maybe it will take like 30 hours so i don't know how many as it depends okay, but yeah. when wait a second wait a second uh huh you the price of the house is 28000 pounds am i right yeah this is the price and they are saying that pay us every month 1000 pound yes okay and this mean after 280 months you will pay the whole amount am i right second like yes or no yes yes okay so in this case i don't see anything wrong in it as per my knowledge there is nothing for example you came to me you wanted a house i told you that if you pay me whole amount together i will give this house to you for 230 and 1000 pounds but if you want it on installments then i will give you this same house for 2 Eight zero 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 pounds, and each month you need to pay one thousand pounds. You will pay one thousand pounds every month. So, as per my knowledge, nothing wrong in it. You see, this two hundred and eighty thousand pounds. Every ten years, there's interest of like fifteen percent. Or with this mortgage, it goes up and down. So there's interest in there. Mm. If they are adding such condition, then I believe it is not allowed. 
because they need to be clear everything in for example if i say that interest money i don't know what is it so i don't think that is allowed but if they fix the amount and whether they have loss in it or whether they don't have profit in it then it is allowed but i think i depend on you what are their terms and condition actually so you are saying that they take some interest money like 10 percent every year yeah because there is an islamic mortgage they give you a house for like the house is 280 thousand pounds mm -hmm. they will buy for you and then you will pay them 350 thousand pounds the muslim company they will buy for it maybe these people are selling for 280000 the muslim community the one with the mortgage they will buy for you 280 but you will pay them 350000 pound and this 350000 is fixed or it can change it's fixed because they buy for you for 280 but for them they add a profit for 350 so you will pay 350 same there's no interest there's no 10 percent or going up or going down okay let me understand this new situation now so the a company bought the house for 280 pounds okay to yes 280,000 pounds this muslim company bought this house okay then that company sold the same house to you for 350,000 pounds and you will pay them 1000 pound per month this is the situation am i right the situation is when i want a house this company they will buy for me if it's 280 they will take all the money and buy for me the 280000 so when they buy for me so they will they will add for me like this 350 for me to pay yeah so go yeah. So they bought this house for 280,000 pounds. Yeah. They sold it to you for 350,000 pounds. Yeah. And you will pay them 1,000 per month to pay this amount. Uh -huh. Because the, the these people are there. If me, I need a house, so I want to buy, I will go to them. Okay. They have the money. So okay. they will buy for me and they will add profit. Okay. So no. I will pay this new amount nothing wrong in it they are doing legally in business which is allowed in islam nothing are wrong in it as for my knowledge this is halal the company is earning the right profit and there is nothing haram in it you can continue with them okay shukran okay even if I had money, I will do the same thing. I will buy the cheap house for this and then on installment, we can increase the price. Nothing wrong in it as per my knowledge. Okay, now read this or this. It was narrated from Abu Musa that he used to advise people to do the matter in Hajj. A man said to him, do not rush in giving fatwas, for you do not know the, what Amir al-Mu'minin al had decided with regard to Hajj. When he met him later on, he asked him and Umar said, I know that the Prophet wasallam did it and his companions did it. But I, but I do not like the people to have intercourse with their wife beneath the Arab trees and go out to Hajj. 
with their heads dripping from hosso. So there are types of Hajj, inshallah, we'll study them in the chapter of Hajj in detail. Miss Amina, Aisha, read the next one. It was narrated that Abdul Rahman bin Auf said Umar bin Al Khattab did Hajj and wanted wanted to deliver a speech to the people. Abdul Rahman bin Auf said the uneducated people are gathered around you, so delay it until you come to Medina. When he came to Medina, I got close to him when he was on the on the min bar and i heard him saying some people are saying why should we stone adulterers uh, in the book of allah it only mentioned flogging but the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam stoned adulterers and he stoned them after him, were it not that people would say you have interested something into the book of Allah that he not, that is not part of it, I would have interested it it as it was revealed. We can't hear you. Your mic is mute. <clears throat> okay, the word here is inserted. So here we have few things that Islamic law is not only in Quran but also in Hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if anything is mentioned in Hadith but not mentioned in Quran, still it is varied Islamic law. For example, the punishment of adultery for a married man or for a married woman is death by stoning. This thing is not mentioned in Quran, but it is mentioned in Hadith. So it is very Islamic law. So Islamic law is based on Quran and Hadith. Some things are mentioned in Quran, some things are mentioned in Hadith. And some things are mentioned in both Quran and Hadith of Islamic law. Then the next thing mentioned here is that no one can enter or no one can remove anything from Holy Quran. So whatever Allah has revealed, it will stay intact. Even if it is an Hadith, still we cannot add it to the Quran. So in Quran, only those things are there which are revealed by Allah Almighty directly. We cannot even include any hadith in the Quran. So these things are mentioned here. No need to write any question here because these are not related to us. We cannot do anything about them. Next student, Khatija. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, read this. It was narrated as it was narrated that Shimak Bun Hab said, I had a new man, that is Bun Bashir, said Umar radiallahu an mentioned what the people had acquired of what they gains and said, I saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remaining cold up with anger pangs all day unable to find even the worst type of date which dates with which to fill his stomach 
So this was the life of Prophet ﷺ. Whenever he used to have anything, he used to donate it to the other people. And as a result, he often used to remain hungry for whole day. And even he did not have low quality dates to fill his stomach. So he was living such a simple life and most of the time he used to remain hungry. He even did not have food to eat for days often. This was his life. That's all for today. If anybody has any question, they can ask me now. Then we will stop the class. Just 